everybody. New setup, I'm filming at my house because my camera was already here from the house door. Before we get into this video, I wanted to say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring. I have COVID right now, so if my voice sounds funny or I look horrible, that's why. Um, so I kind of wanted to do a chill video and I found this Reddit thread on female fashion advice. Somebody said, what are some of your personal fashion rules? This person to kind of like set the tone of what responses they wanted said, when I was around 11, my friend told me blue and green should never be seen unless there's a color in between and it's taken me a long time to become flexible with it. What are some personal fashion rules you still abide by? I have done a video in the past about your guys' fashion rules to live by and I still love that video and follow a lot of the rules and break a lot of the rules so if you want more inspo like that, check out that one. But um, these are some different rules and I thought they were kind of cool just to see different fashion rules from people who don't watch my videos, maybe have different style than us and all that kind of stuff. So I went through and I picked my favorite I want to share with you and kind of talk about them. I did this a while ago so I actually don't remember. The top one when I screenshotted this was if it's uncomfortable at all don't wear it. Don't second guess yourself. Your gut is right. Gonna take all your energy all day long to wear it and adjust yourself. I never regret changing my clothes. I feel like that is so true. If I decide like last minute to just wear something a lot more comfortable opposed to something that's too short, too tight, itchy, uh, maybe just like has too much fabric and doesn't belong in the setting I'm going, I never regret dressing comfortable. And I feel like that's something that I kind of struggle with, especially in the like colder months. I never regret wearing a crew neck and joggers and sneakers. And I'm like, if I never regret it, why ever dress cute in the winter time? In the summer, I do almost every day because it's so easy just to put on like a sundress and you're good to go. But in the winter when it's cold, I never regret wearing that. So the next one's actually funny because it's when in doubt, you're better off being overdressed rather than underdressed. I don't know. Like, I feel like for older people, maybe that this was a rule that was really easy to live by. My mom would always tell me that, that you'd rather be overdressed than underdressed. But I don't know. Were you guys the same way where like, if you dressed up cute for school one day, your friends would be like, who are you trying to impress and kind of make fun of you? Because I feel like I still have that little stigma of like, I don't want to be overdressed because I would get made fun of. And I know that like I'm way older now and I shouldn't have to worry about those kind of things, but I don't know, did, did our parents not grow up with this notion? Because, you know, they didn't have leggings and hoodies that they wore every day. They wore just like nicer clothes as is because now I see the high schoolers, like when I see them at the bus stop and stuff, they wear literal pajamas every single day. They were like plaid pajama pants to school every day. Like we weren't that casual, but is it better to be underdressed now than overdressed? I don't know. I'd like to know how old the person was who made that comment. Okay, they said, if the there is a pattern or print, I want it to carry through all the way around. If it stops only at the front of the garment, that's not a Allowed. I feel like that's just like a good rule when buying clothes because it does make the item look a lot cheaper unless it looks like intentional but yeah you want pattern to be all the way around through all the fabric easy rule I don't think it needs to be a rule I would just already want that if I'm wearing a jacket or coat it must be proportional to what I am wearing under it so I wouldn't wear a crop jacket over a long cardigan there are many sub rules under this I so disagree with this I love when my like top, even under a sweater, a crew neck, or a jacket, peaks under the jacket. I actually don't normally like when you can't see what's underneath my over layer. I don't know, I think it just adds a lot more texture, it adds more depth. I feel like I even do this when I'm dressing my daughter, like if I put a sweater over top whatever she's wearing, I always have like her little t-shirt peeking underneath. I make it look intentional though, like the color goes with the outfit. Um, even if it's like, like a collar peeking through the top, I don't like like a v-neck sweater with no t-shirt underneath. I don't even like like a crew neck sweater with no t-shirt underneath. I like to see the layers of my outfit. So their fashion rule is my fashion. I don't know. It's just like the opposite. We have a special guest. Okay, next one says, for a busty woman, a good bra can make an outfit 10 times better. So agree with this. And I feel like, especially with like my bra size fluctuating so much with breastfeeding and being pregnant and all that kind of stuff, I have so many bras that are too big. I have so many bras that are too small. And if I, you know, don't have a clean bra that's exactly my size and I'm wearing it, like my outfit is ruined. Whether it's like that double boob or you have like a gap and you're trying to wear a tighter shirt. If you have a good bra, you're golden. Next one, don't wear cheap shoes. You've only got one pair 
of feet, I only buy shoes from shoe brands, never from fashion brands. I thought that that was such a like mind blowing thing is like you're not going to buy shoes from like H&M because they're a clothing brand. They're not a shoe brand. Instead, you would buy a shoe from like Steve Madden and you know, not saying Steve Madden is like super high end, but they're a shoe brand. I kind of already felt like that with shoe brands trying to make like clothes or even bags really. I'm always like, well, if Steve Madden is a shoe brand. I'm not gonna buy their sweater. Like that just doesn't make any sense. So why am I buying shoes from brands that are known for their clothes? But I think good shoes really will save the day because first of all, it's that comfort thing. If your shoes aren't comfortable, you're gonna have a horrible time. Yeah, I mean, I literally have feet of steel though. I could wear anything from, I think it's from ballet or it's my feet are steel. And then the other one is natural fabrics, washed properly, will last for years. Invest in good quality and ethical companies. We've been preaching that over here already. This person said, I usually wear a black bag, jacket, and shoe, or a brown bag, jacket, and shoe, not mixing and matching. And this is like the complete opposite of what I like. I seriously don't normally like like a black bag, black shoe, black jacket especially. I just think it makes the outfit look really boring. Unless like your dress or like shirt and pant combo underneath is so obnoxious that like that's the only thing that would go with it. I think almost always at least one of those has to be a different color. I think it makes the outfit look way more interesting. I do styling on index for a lot of you guys and I almost always have like one of those pieces not matching just matching in a different way than like being exact. And it always makes the outfit look way cooler. Pinterest worthy, fashion forward. Uh, I think the other way makes the outfit look too formulated. This person said, if I can't wear a standard bra with it, it's a no-go for me. I'm not that well endowed, but I don't want to build a special wardrobe of undergarments for specific pieces. This eliminates halters, strapless, backless, etc. That's so crazy to me. I think if I have to wear a special bra with it, it just means I'm not wearing a bra with it. And I know not everybody can do that. So if I'm gonna buy a halter or, you know, a spaghetti strap or something that would need like a strapless bra or like even like nipple pasties, something like that, I would have to buy something that's not see-through. So I guess I kind of follow that rule because strapless bras just like don't work for me. And I have nipple pasties, but like I'm really only going to use those for like a wedding and like a special gown or something, you know? I'm not going to go day to day wearing nipple pasties. I think my boobs are just too big for that, but I know other people do. And breastfeeding, could you imagine like you just start leaking and they'd all fall off? <laughs> I need to be able to pee easily when I wear said item. This eliminates jumpsuits, rompers, and one-piece bathing suits for me. Okay, one-piece bathing suits, you can literally just pull it to the side. I feel like as a dancer you and a swimmer, you learn that pretty early. <laughs> That's a way to pee. I don't know, is that really gross? But jumpsuits and rompers, like, yeah, I get it. They're annoying to pee in, but I don't know. Sometimes I sacrifice being able to pee easily. How many times a day do you do it? agree with that one because I love a romper and a jumpsuit or like overalls please I have to wear those things next one I don't buy anything in white anymore because I never wear it and spill something on it a hundred percent of the time when I do I feel like this is a new rule for me especially with a toddler because every time she eats she'll get like food on herself and then I go to pick her up out of the high chair and it immediately goes on me as I'm wearing a white t-shirt this is fine but anything white on like the chest area just assume that it's gonna get dirty so I kind of do follow that rule now and so many pieces like only come in white or black and I really don't even like black it makes me not buy them which is probably just good this one I'm happy somebody else does it they said this might be slightly off topic but if I'm shopping at an unfamiliar store or brand and I see something I like I will make sure that I can find at least three other things that I love in that collection before handing over the cash. I found from experience that I am much less likely to bu have buyers remorse if I follow this through I feel this like if I'm shopping for from something online it's so hard for me besides like a secondhand website but even like Depop but it's so hard for me to just buy one item I always want to buy at least like two or three or I just won't purchase it has been a, like subconscious rule for me that I just always end up doing and this person kind of says they do it because they just don't feel like the piece will fit in their wardrobe. I just kind of do it out of, I don't know, the shipping feels wasteful for one item, whether it's free or not. It makes me not buy a lot of stuff because a lot of the times I don't find more than one item, but I have found when I like something so much that like I am willing to just like get the shipping just for one item, that item normally ends up being such a staple in my wardrobe. And when I like add the few other pieces, I really don't like it that much. So I think I need to start doing, you're only allowed to buy one thing because then I'm like, okay, is it really worth it? Because I'll end up adding 
more than one thing that I don't even really want just to like be able to get the one item. You get what I mean? And that was the last one. There are so many more like threads on Reddit that I want to go through with you guys because they're not everybody has Reddit or is on female fashion advice. They're fun and they're fun to share with you guys and kind of hear what your guys' opinions are on them. There's like a million and ten more of those so we can definitely do more or do a different thread or whatever you guys want. Before we end this video, let's talk a little bit about Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and platform to stand out and succeed online. Squarespace makes building and maintaining a website easy. I love it because I can focus more on the creative aspects and let Squarespace do the heavy lifting. Make it easy to sell your products in an online store. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools to sell your products online. Analytics is something that is so important when maintaining and improving your website and your brand, and Squarespace makes analytics easy. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. If your Squarespace account is acting as an online store, the checkout process is so easy for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. Accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay and offer your customers the option to buy now and pay later with ClearPay and Afterpay. Head to squarespace.com slash Ozark to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with code Ozark. And that's it. I love you guys the absolute most and I'll see you in a few days. Bye.